and welcome back for another Flex Time Review. In our review today, we're going to be taking a look at Albert Bandura's Social Cognitive Theory on Learning. Here helping me today, we have Bobo the Dial. <laughs> Bobo's a pretty important guy, and you will see why in just a second. As always, if you would like to follow along with this video, there is a link in the description box that will bring you to a worksheet that goes along with the video. With that being said, let's get started. If you have been following these flex time videos in order, as of right now we have discussed two types of learning, both operant and classical conditioning. We saw that conditioning does fall under the behavioral school of psychology, where psychologists only analyze observable behaviors and completely disregard any cognitive components. So things like thoughts and feelings. One of our most prominent behavioral psychologists, B.F. Skinner, went as far as stating that cognitive sciences is the downfall to psychology. Skinner made this statement in front of a thousand friends and colleagues when being awarded the APA citation for outstanding lifetime contribution to psychology. Even with Skinner's pure disdain for the cognitive sciences, the perspective was still able to flourish, being one of the most recognized fields in psychology today. At the start of his career, psychologist Albert Bandura studied observable behaviors just like Skinner did. However, after several research studies and experiments, Bandura has since switched to a total cognitive approach. Bandura still does agree with behaviorists, with the fact that behaviors can still be learned through operant and classical conditioning, but Bandura believes that several cognitive processes occur during this learning that may impact our behavior, specifically through observation. Now, observational learning is going to be just what it sounds like, learning by observing others. It makes perfect sense. I'm actually going to give you a sports example here. Let's say I want to learn a new soccer move, so I go on to YouTube and I type in Cristiano Ronaldo cool soccer moves. I watch the video a couple times until I think I have it down, and then I go outside and try to repeat this behavior. Cristiano acted as a model for me in my attempt to observe and imitate his behavior. Now, unfortunately for me, I didn't do the best job at it. Modeling, which is the process of observing and imitating behaviors, plays a huge role in observational learning. I'm sure we have all gone to YouTube to try and learn something new, whether it be a new sports move or how to win at a video game or whatever. That is us learning through observation. Bandura's theory is known as the social cognitive theory of learning, which states that learning is going to result from watching, imitating, and modeling, and does not require the observer to perform any observable actions or receive any observable reward. According to Bandura, for learning to occur through observation, we have to do a few things. First, we're going to have to pay attention to what the model says or does. Then we have to encode this information into our memory so it can be retrieved for later use. Remembering this information helps guide our actions in order to imitate the model's behavior. And last, we actually have to have enough motivation to do the behavior in the first place. So how exactly did Bandura come up with this theory? Well, that's where our friend Bobo is going to come in. Starting in the 1960s, Bandura is going to conduct several experiments on observational learning. One of his most well-known being the Bobo doll experiment. The goal being to see if aggression can be acquired through observation and imitation. The sample used for the study was 36 boys and 36 girls from the Stanford University Nursery School, all aged from 3 to 6. During the experiment, children were individually brought into a room with a bunch of toys. The kids could be part of one of three groups. On the board, you can see exactly how the experimental design was set up. We have 72 children in total, and they were broken down into three equal groups. We have 24 kids who were used as a control group. They were not provided with a model to observe. Another 24 kids were exposed to a non-aggressive male or female model, who played in a quiet manner in the corner of the room for about 10 minutes. And our last group of 24 kids was exposed to an aggressive male or female model, who viciously assaulted our Bobo doll for the 10 minutes. This first stage was considered the modeling stage. Once the modeling stage was complete, all children in the study were individually taken to another room that had some of the best toys of the time. However, children were only given two minutes to play with the toys in this room. The purpose of stage two was to build up the frustration level among the kids. For our last stage, the children were brought to a room that had a mixture of aggressive and non-aggressive toys. The non-aggressive toys being things such as crowns, papers, dolls, stuffed animals, toy cars, while the aggressive items were a tether ball with a face painted on it, a dart gun, a mallet, and most importantly, our Bobo doll. Each child was given 20 minutes to play in the room. During this time, experimenters rated each kid's level of aggressiveness as they observed through a one-sided mirror. The results of Bandura's experiment allowed him to come to several conclusions about how we learn through observation. We see that children who observed aggressive behavior made far more imitative aggressive responses compared to those who were in the non-aggressive model group or the control group. We also saw that boys were more likely to imitate same-sex models over girls, and boys also showed to imitate more physical aggression over girls. 
As I mentioned, these findings confirmed Bandura's social cognitive theory of learning, which was published in 1977 as a result of the Bobo doll experiment. Another psychological concept that Bandura came up with as a result of his experiments was the idea of vicarious reinforcement. Bandura stated that an observer's behavior can be affected by the positive or negative consequences that a model receives. So we're not only watching what people do, but we're also analyzing what happens as a result of their actions. This is what is known as vicarious reinforcement, which basically states that we're more likely to imitate behaviors that are rewarded and much less likely to imitate behaviors that are punished. In another one of Bandura's studies, he kept the overall premise the same, but instead with this time, children in each group are going to observe the model either being awarded for aggressive behavior or punished for aggressive behavior. The results showed that children in the reward and control group exhibited much more aggressive actions than those in the punishment condition. The children in the group who observed the model being punished still learned aggression through observation, but they chose not to imitate it because of the expectation of some type of punishment. So, short, sweet, and to the point. There you have Bandura's Bobo the Doll experiment. And as you saw, poor Bobo over here has been through a lot. So how about we give Bobo a big round of applause. You go, Bobo. Anyways, that does it for me. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. It is always appreciated, and it will keep you posted for when I post new videos. Pretty exciting stuff, I know. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.